say, well, why don't we, I think we have a quorum certainly. So why don't we call the meeting to order at 7.02 p.m. Thanks everybody for joining on a Wednesday. I know it's a little weird. Um, and thank you, Sean, for, for joining us. Um, just to quickly get through the basic agenda items before we get to the presentation piece, um, we have roll call. Um, so I'll start with myself, Christina Davis, present. Paul Varga. I'm here. Sorry, I had to get it unmuted. That's okay. Uh, Judith Austin. Here. Angie DeSanto, I don't think is present. Uh, Pam Summers. Here. Keith Lipker. Here. And for our alternates, Tim Rhodes. Here. Holland Love. I don't think Holland is here. And Hugh McKenzie. I don't see Hugh. Okay. Um, Tim, Angie DeSanto did request that you be seated um, in her place. So I'll ask that we do that. Okay. Next up, um, communications. Um, uh, I did receive a last or late day email from King King and Associates, which I'm sure Sean will review. Um, so folks, if you didn't check your email, there is a updated document related to the audit and the single state audit, which I'm sure again, Sean will review. Um, that's all for communications and public comments. Uh, does anybody have a public comment? We have a three minute time limit, just as a reminder. Would anybody like to speak? Okay, I think we can move on. Um, next up, we have new business is the presentation of the July 1, 2022 through June 30th, 2023 Town of Ashford audit by Sean O'Grady of King King and Associates. So Sean, I will let you take it away. Thank you, Christina. Uh, how's everybody doing today? Good, how are you? Good. I'm just going to try to share my screen if it'll let me. If it doesn't, maybe I can give you permission. <clears throat> this works. Okay, I put together a couple slides, so I'm, uh, I'll have the slides up and I'm going to jump back and forth because I have the PDF of the audit so we can kind of see what they correspond to at the same time. Okay, sounds good. Uh, so there's... you have four pieces to your audit. You have the main financial statement audit. You have your Connecticut single audit when you spend more than 300,000 of state money. And you have your federal single audit if you spend more than 750,000 of federal money. Uh, you also have your Board of Ed's EFS procedures, uh, testing procedures specified by Connecticut State Department of Education. It results in its own separate agreed upon procedure report that gets sent to CTSDE. Uh, Sean, just before I forget, um, would it be possible for you to email me this presentation so we can um, yeah. share it with folks as well? Yep. Yeah, I just, I put it together today, so. Yep, that's fine. Thanks. Uh, so you did get a clean opinion on the financial statement audit. Um, Starting at page four is management's discussion and analysis. Uh, this is kind of a high level overview. Uh, it gives management of the town a chance to discuss reason for changes between year to year, uh, talk about any significant events that might've occurred, uh, purchases of capital assets, changes in long-term debt. Uh, pages 11 and 12. These are the government wide financial statements. Uh, these are prepared on the full accrual basis of accounting. So these are gonna include all capital assets and long-term liabilities. Uh, so page 11 is similar to what you would see in a, a private sector business. Uh, the numbers are kind of 
too broad for most boards to use for governing. Uh, so getting to page 13, this is mostly uh, what the boards like to focus on. These are your governmental fund financial statements. Uh, these are prepared on the modified accrual basis of accounting. So they focus more on the near term inflows and outflows. Uh, our first bullet, the general funds total fund balance was 2,867,718. Uh, the components of that can be seen on a chart later in the audit on page 32 and also in your combining general fund schedule on page 57. The unassigned general funds fund balance of 2,552,699 is 16.3% of your original general fund budgeted expenditures and transfers out. Uh, so you have a minimum fund balance range of 10 to 15%. Uh, so that's right outside it, a little bit above it. And that's down here on this page. So a single page. Uh, also on page 13 in the capital non-recurring fund. So you have a grant receivable this year of 481,000 and that's related to the steep grant for Southworth Drive. And so you'll see that up in receivables here in the capital non-recurring fund. Also on page 13, you have the ARPA grant fund. So you still have 653,987 of the ARPA grant funds remaining. And that shows up as unearned revenue in the ARPA grant fund until uh, the expenditures are posted and then you'll recognize the revenue. Uh, so as long as you still have this money, which likely going to be spent next year, you'll probably have another federal single audit next year. Uh, going to page 15. So this is the statement of revenues, expenditures, changes in fund balance for the governmental funds. Uh, the general fund had a net, a positive change in fund balance of 454,296. Uh, and during the year, you spent 469000 from the ARPA grant fund. Uh, so we'll see that number show up later on on the federal single audit report. Uh, so here is a three-year general fund fund balance trend. So you can kind of see how your general fund fund balance uh, has been getting a little bit larger each year for the last three years. Which is a good thing, right? It's a good thing. <laughs> as long as it doesn't get too big where somebody asks why you have so much fun balance. <laughs> uh, so then note one, summary of significant accounting policies. Uh, most of the notes in here are Boilerplate, um, no one is tailored specifically to your town with uh, like your capital asset thresholds, um, depreciable lives, stuff like that. But the rest of it is pretty boilerplate language. Getting to pages 30 to 32. Uh, so these are your long-term liabilities. Uh, during the year, you had the GO bonds pay down of 220,000. Uh, so you only have 340,000 left of the GO bonds. Your annual debt service requirement on that is about 43,000 per year, which includes the principal and interest. Uh, so you also have the equipment financing note, uh, debt service payments on that each year are about 110,000 um, and that includes the excavator and your fire truck. Uh, there's also a couple of smaller leases payable. Uh, so these got picked up as part of GASV 87's implementation last year. Uh, so the, I guess we call it debt service payments for your leases, uh, which includes 
uh, copiers at the Board of Ed and copiers at the town is about 15,000 a year. Uh, so this is the fund balance chart I had mentioned earlier. Let's see if I can get it. Uh, so it just shows the various components of the fund balances, which are shown in total on the front pages. Uh, these committed balances in the general fund, we'll see later on in the uh, combining general fund balance sheet, um, there's various funds that make up the combined general fund, uh, one of them being Board of Ed non-lapsing fund. Going to page 40. Or 34. I can't see the pages with the, the zoom bar at the bottom. Uh, so the teacher's retirement liability, uh, you guys aren't responsible for it, but the portion of it that is associated with the town of Ashford is 14 million. 2,451. Uh, the amount that the state kicked in to the pension on your behalf this year was 1.1 million. A uh, similar idea for the teacher's retirement OPEB. The liability associated with Ashford is 1,226,743. Uh, you guys aren't responsible for it. It's just it's your portion of the total. Um, and the amount the state kicked in on your behalf was 16615 So if somewhere down the road, the state was looking to save money somewhere, they, they've tossed around the idea of pushing some of this down to the towns. Uh, so starting on uh, your page, this is. Uh, so this is your detailed budgetary schedule. Uh, probably similar to what you're used to looking at at some of your board meetings. Uh, there's not really any significant variances in here. Everything was pretty much as expected. Uh, motor vehicle tax cap grant. Uh, that one was came in as a revenue, uh, not budgeted for. Uh, so here's page 57. So this is the combining balance sheet for the general fund. Uh, so you can see all the components that make it up. So the library rolls up into the general fund, the non-lapsing fund, um, the 300 uh, anniversary fund. And so each one of those has its own little committed fund balance that makes up the total 300,000 fund balance at the front. Uh, pages 59 through 62, so these are your non-major governmental funds. Uh, so these funds don't meet the criteria to be a major fund. Uh, the major funds are presented in separate columns at the front of the report. Uh, so these are generally the smaller funds. On page 64, so this is your... Um, Report of the tax collector. It shows your outstanding taxes receivable broken down by grand list year uh, and the total receivable down at the bottom right here. Uh, so at June 30, 2023, you had 627,550 of outstanding taxes receivable. Uh, one ratio that we like to look at uh, is that number versus the current levy. Uh, so yours is about 5.3% of the current levy. And we normally see it between two and six. So you're kind of towards the higher range. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, so that would be it for the financial statement report. If there's any questions or if we want to do questions at the end. Um, yeah, why don't we break for questions on this first document since it's pretty lengthy. Um, does anybody have a question about what Sean just reviewed or anything that you saw in this particular document, the one that's the draft 2023 Ashford document? Anyone? Hopefully I didn't put everyone to sleep yet. <laughs> um, I did have a question. Maybe you can call this up on your screen. So on page four of this document, can you call that up? Yeah, so the second and third bullets, if you could zoom in. <clears throat> Um, this is just my, my ignorance or confusion. So in the third bullet, it says in the last sentence of this amount, 2,535,898 is available for spending at the government's discretion, parentheses, unassigned fund balance. And then down below in the next bullet, it says the unassigned fund balance is 2,500, so slightly different number, kind of close, but not the same. So what, why are those two differences, th those two numbers different if they're both unassigned uh, so fund balance? The third bullet should be talking about uh, all funds in total. And the fourth bullet is just specifically the general fund. So I'll go to the, the page and it should be the what I just said, hopefully. <laughs> Yep, so in total, it would be down in the bottom right here, the unassigned. Uh, so there is a negative unassigned factoring in from the non-major funds. And that is from... It's from the recreation fund. So it has a negative fund balance of 16,801, uh, which should be restored through future charges for services or if necessary, transfer from the general fund. So the recreation fund has a negative balance of 16,000 something. Yeah, yeah so I'll, I'll take you to the page that it's on in the back here. Yeah, so it's in this column right here. So general fund transferred in 103,000. Uh, there was also about 40,000 in charges for services, but the fund had spent 152,000. So it ended up running a deficit of 9,000. And then it previously had a deficit of 7,000. Hmm. So it, it may just need a, a little extra funding from the general fund. Okay, that's that seems like something we should pay attention to. So thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the other question I had, does anybody in before if, if somebody else wants to jump in, I have another question on a different page. Okay, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, so the last page, which is the um schedule of authorized capital projects and purchases mm -hmm. yeah um so and if you could zoom in just a tad so this uh the carry forward in the column on the far right of 719,510 and this may not be a question for you to answer Sean it might be something for Sherry Susie to comment on but am I correct that that's a large number to carry forward, like last year we carried forward sixty eight thousand. Um, just curious, like what's going on with that large total there? Yeah, it looks like there was an authorization for the Cato property remediation. I'm pretty sure that that grant got denied, right? That's what I thought. Does anybody? Yes, that grant was denied. Okay, so yeah, so that one may just get um, eliminated. So it was authorized, but you're not going to do it, obviously, because you're not going to get the grant funding. 
Yeah, so I just, do we have to take that into account with our new budget somehow? Like, anyone? Does anybody know what, what we do with that? Sherry, are you there? It, it came off the capital projects completely. Oh, hello, Sherry. Hello. Yes, from my understanding with the capital meetings that they've had, that has come off for this this uh, coming up for the 24-25. <clears throat> so is there any, I mean, because we alloc, did, did we or did we not? Okay, so when we allocated the money in the previous capital improvement plan, we said that was going to be state funded. So we didn't take right. anything, we didn't commit CNR funds for that. That is correct. Okay, so we so yeah, so it's kind of a wash, is what we're saying. It will be. Yeah. Okay. All right. It also, Sherry, is am I reading this correctly that the um, oil tank replacement hasn't been paid out yet? Is that correct? That is correct. It happened. <clears throat> there was uh, purchase orders in place. Uh, those rolled into the this current year into this twenty three twenty four, and the actual expenses were. Uh, in this, you know, in the 23, 24 year. So that'll show up on your next spreadsheet here showing, okay. I think it's 113,000 roughly in expenses on that right. project. Yeah, and that's another part of that too, uh, Christina, that, that that project came in under budget. So that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I guess one other maybe big picture question, Sean, is, um, you know, our unassigned fund balance being 16% of total expenditures, if I said that correctly. Um, uh, looking at other, I, I looked at other audits for other communities throughout the state, and um, that seems to be pretty healthy, but there are some communities that I saw that have like 25 30 percent um so i'm just curious in your experience with working with other towns like how do we compare is that something we should be striving for or is that not realistic given the value of real estate in ashford versus like some of the communities that have those big 25 30 percent are fairfield county litchfield county mm -hmm. yeah so gfoa recommends that you keep uh two months worth of revenues in surplus which is like 16 point six seven percent uh, it's just that you have that minimum fund balance policy of 10 to 15 percent so if you were going by gfoa you're pretty much right on okay uh, but a lot a lot of other towns do have like 18 to 20 percent and is that really just because they have really valuable much more valuable real estate is that what's kind of driving that or um yeah, it could just be like that the, each year their revenues come in uh, greater than their outflows. So I don't know if they're budgeting conservatively or overtaxing. Or overtaxing. Yeah. That'd be one way to put it. Okay. Um, so that that's my questions on this document. Did anybody else have any other questions on this particular document? No? Okay. So, Sean, you can move on. Okay. Uh, the next one would be the federal single audit. So, that's one of the smaller ones. Uh, so, going to pages six and seven. So, this is your schedule of expenditures of federal awards. So, this will list uh, all of your expenditures of federal grant money. Uh, you, in total, you spent about 1.2 million. Uh, like I mentioned before, 469,000 of that was the town's ARPA funding. Uh, there's also another 94,000 that flowed through the State Department of Education uh, for the SMART funding for the school nutrition. There's also, so you have 243,000, which was the ESSER funding, so that's also COVID-19 money. 
uh, and then another 40,000 roughly of special education ARPA money or ESSER money. So that's more COVID funding. Uh, and then another 144,000 was related to the school nutrition program at the school. So af after COVID is over and all the money is gone, you should go back to not having the, the federal. Uh, pages nine and 10. So this is the schedule of findings and question costs. Uh, so internal control over financial reporting. There was no material weaknesses or significant deficiencies identified. Uh, no non-compliance material to the financial statements noted and internal control over the major federal programs, which were the ARPA. Uh, there was no material weaknesses identified and no significant deficiencies identified. Uh, so that's uh, basically all of that small report. If anyone has any questions on the federal. I don't have any questions on that one. Anybody else? Nope. Okay, we can move on. Uh, so the next small one, the state single audit. Uh, so going to page seven. So this is your schedule of expenditures of state financial assistance. And just to reiterate this, it, there's there was a new version distributed uh, late this afternoon, and, and you're going to show us the new version. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. yeah, this is this is the new version. Uh, so I'll go, I'll go through the uh, this schedule, then I'll go over what change. Um, so you spent 4.8 million of state money uh, of the 4.8 million, 3.6 million of it was related to the educational cost sharing and the excess cost grants. Uh, 145,000 you received for the motor vehicle grant. Uh, you also spent 482,000 of the steep money uh, related to, I think it was Southworth Road. Yeah, that was a paving project, I believe. And then also another 294,000 for Town Aid Road and 117,000 related to the school readiness programs. Uh, so pages nine and 10, summary of auditor results. So this is um, the page that changed. We were kind of up in the air on how to address the, um, for the steep grant. Uh, the contract stated that you're required to submit quarterly reports. Uh, the town kind of thought the DOT didn't need the reports, but uh, we talked it over here and, and I talked to Chris King. Uh, so the contract required it. So we have to go with what the contract said. Uh, so that's what the change was that the contract required reports and the reports weren't done until the end of the project. Is that, um, cause I, I mean, it's sort of surprising to me because I believe we get steep grants pretty regularly. And so um, I'm just wondering like, do we never submit, have we never in the past submitted these or is this a new requirement that perhaps? Yeah, so it depends what agency they pass it through. Uh, sometimes they'll pass it through OPM or they'll pass it through DECD. Uh, this one they sent through Department of Transportation. Uh, so they, they all have like varying requirements. Okay, so it's possible that in the past it's gone through a different agency, they didn't require this, so then we were a little surprised perhaps. Yeah about it yeah and it it was in the the print is pretty small in this attachment a that was on the contract okay sherry susie i just curious if you have any comment on this or any thoughts i know it was surpri probably surprising to you as well to get late in late in the day today so if you don't have anything thoughtful to say <laughs> i understand yeah it was it was a surprise to me when i saw it at six o'clock when i was leaving my other town and i was like <laughs> in the so uh, yeah, Steve, I haven't dealt with Steve personally in probably about 10, 15 years. So and I know this project was be pretty much finished when I started with your town. So I wasn't involved in that. And 
like Sean said, yes, the rules change. You never did have the quarterly reports. It was always a report at the end of the year. So that is something that uh, we will, you know, definitely look at when if the town applies for another steep grant to make sure those reports are done. And I know with a lot of reporting things, you know, with different grants now, they've changed criteria and what's required. So it has changed along with everything else <laughs> for reporting. Yeah, I have a question on that. Is there any penalty assigned to the town for not having reported? No, the, there's no penalty. I, I don't think the DOT was even chasing. So there, it wasn't going to be like you were going to get a notification that you didn't submit it. It's just that the contract said that you had to do it. And I think DOT is very far behind. So they're they're not like on top of quarterly grant reports. Mm -mm. So it doesn't sound like we're, we're disclosing this in the spirit of transparency yeah. and uh, we promise to do better in the future is kind of that, the that's story. essentially how it goes. OK, well, I think that's I think that's appreciated. And now we know. And uh, yeah, I mean, the fact that the rules change depending on what agency it comes through seems a little confusing to me, so I can understand how that could get difficult. So then there is a, a suggested response, I believe that you put in this document, right? Yeah, yeah. so we, um, Tracy filled in kind of like a, a response that you can start with just so you don't have a blank response. Right, but and I think we kind of need to like finalize this so we can adopt this document this evening. So Sherry, I don't know if you can, if you've had a chance to look at that. I mean, it seems reasonable to me <laughs> but I don't want us to approve something that you don't think is correct. No, it, it seems fine. So, I mean, you know, last minute, you know, when I saw it and an hour before, you know, coming on here and I'm like, you know, it's, it's fine. If we can go with that or, you know, throw in something a little more detail or if that will suffice, I'm good with it. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Okay. It's basically just saying we we thought we could do it at the end and we did. Yep. So yep. just we've acknowledged it and go forward. <laughs> okay. That sounds good to me. Any other comments on this? I know it's a little confusing. So, you know, if you're confused and you need clarification, please feel free to ask questions. Okay, I think we can move on. Okay, and then the last thing, uh, this is just a management letter recommendation. Uh, so it's not like um, material weakness, it's not a significant deficiency. It just goes in the letter as a other matter. Uh, so it's just, and a lot of towns have issues with Board of Ed to town reconciliations. So we just recommend that, um, and I think you said you'll do it monthly that you reconcile with the Board of Ed just to match up your numbers with theirs. Uh, it's harder to do it at the end, but if you if you do it monthly, you can catch something right away. And that, that kind of uh, reared its head this year, right, Sean? So we had an issue where what, in like January, right? You found that there was a $41,000 discrepancy between the two, the school and the town. And then yeah. we had to go combing through things to figure out where that mismatch happened. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I caught it um, kind of late in the process, but I snagged it a little bit. But if we do this process moving forward, we hopefully would avoid that. Mm -hmm. Which seems reasonable to me. Is it, is it reasonable, Sherry? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It is. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Uh, that's it. You said that's it. Yeah, that's all I got. Okay. Um, I would just ask Sean, um, because again, so I know you know this. You've heard from me, um, that we were a little disappointed that it did like extend out. To be honest, this timing, like we are hitting it exactly right. Like we got the information we need, I think, to move forward with our budget. 
Um, so I think in the end, it's all going to work out. Um, but it would have felt a lot better had we had this <laughs> meeting in December. Um, so I'm just curious from your point of view, where we could have done better, you know, from our perspective as a town, and maybe from your side, what could have happened to help us get this done on a, you know, on a faster timetable. So any thoughts? Um, I know Tracy just had a little trouble, uh, like scheduling just the way that the timing works, like with the board of eds days that they're in and the days the town is in. So I know she had a little difficulty doing that. Uh, she was newer to the job. So you have a transition in personnel on our side as well. Okay. Well, that's helpful for me to know because I knew in my role as well, um, but that's something that I can keep in mind for the next go round. You know, if scheduling is an issue or a challenge, you know, that's maybe a role I can fill is to help with that, with that in the future. So I appreciate you sharing that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Anything else you want to tell us about our, our books here in Ashford? Uh, I'll, I'll add in that um, I checked it before the meeting. So Right now, there's only 57% of the towns in the state done. So even though it is February, you're still in the top 60%. That is good to know. And I will say, too, when I was looking uh, with uh, going out to bid on audit services, um, there are a lot of towns that are going out to bid for like years in the past, like that they haven't done. So that made me feel better that at least we're not yeah, there's there's still towns that haven't filed their 22 audit. I think yeah, and it looked like there were ones that are even further behind than that. So, so at least we're we're not in that category. Um, okay, so um, any other comments or questions from board members or anybody on the meeting? No. Okay. Um, so then I think we can, our job here this evening is to um, approve the audit as presented. Um, so I need someone to make a motion that we, and I'm going to say this carefully, that we accept the July 1, 2022 through June 30th, 2023 Town of Ashford off audit as presented by Sean O'Grady of King King and Associates. Would someone be willing to make that motion? I'll make that motion. This is Judy Austin. Okay. And a second. Paul Varga. Okay. Paul seconded. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Christina, I'm saying aye. Any opposed? And any abstentions? Okay, so that was approved unanimously. Um, Sean, since you're still here, <laughs> so I think we need the non-draft version of this document. Yep. Yeah, right? so I'll, um, tomorrow morning, I'll have Tracy unhighlight that section and then uh, we can send you the final PDFs and then we'll okay. file it with the state. Okay, so you're gonna file it. Yeah, we file it. Okay. Sherry, do you need anything else? Are you good? No, I think I'm all set as long as we get tomorrow. So let me know and um, I should be fine. Okay. Um, um, you know, I do have one question, Christina. Sean, who do you normally send the audit out to, you know, electronically? I mean, just a rough idea. Uh, we, we send it to the EARS website. Okay. Uh, but we don't send it basically anywhere else, but we do send you bound copies. Okay. Okay. And then All right. you'll have the PDFs that you can distribute to whoever distribute. needs them. That'd be great. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a good point um, about the bound copy. So um, yeah, Tracy from your firm was confirming with me today that we do want printed copies. And so those are going to be delivered to the town hall. And I asked that they be put to my attention. I know last, I think last year, like they got lost in the shuffle. So I'm hoping that 
with it saying my name that that'll make somebody go oh this let me contact christina so but if you have if you get them sherry you know feel free you know i just don't want them to get lost is my concern um and then once we have them i will let the board know so that everybody can have a print copy uh because it is very useful to keep going and referring back to the this audit particularly that that main document that Sean went through first. It's very useful to go through that and refer back to it as the budget process as we're going through the budget process. So um, once we get those print copies, I'll let everybody know. Um, let's see. I think that's it unless anybody else has any questions or comments. Um. No, okay. And would somebody like to make the motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Okay, I think let's say Judy made the motion. And who wants to I'll, second it? I'll second. Is that Tim? Yep, that's Tim. Okay, Tim seconded. All in favor? Bye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? No. Okay, great. Have a lovely evening, everybody. And thank you, Sean, for your time. And uh, yeah, uh, see everybody next week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.